Hi, and welcome to the third installment of the Mari HDR uh, P-Tex painting uh, with V-Ray and Mari. Um, right now, let's open up Maya, and we're going to load in the geometry along with uh, P-Tex and do a few little tests. So, in a new scene file, we're just going to go Import, and uh, if we go under Geometry, uh, we're going to just bring in the Kitchen Island, and let's also bring in the uh, the extra bits geometry that was painted. And if we take a look right here, um, whenever you import OBJs into Maya, you have to unfortunately turn visible on reflections and refractions for all your geo. Uh, second thing we're going to want to do is go in the hyper shade, and we're going to create a view of material. For the sphere, and uh, then we're going to do a light material. I'm going to back side, and we're going to map this to a of your Ptex reader. Uh, so with the Ptex reader, um, you want to make sure we have a. Uh, Interpretation between mitmap levels along with the cache size. So I'm just going to load in uh, 250 megs to make sure we load in all the uh, information in terms of uh, the file for the PTEX just to make everything nice and quick for RT so it doesn't have to search and load up um, for our interactive session. So if we go under PTEX, we're going to grab extra bits and assign it. And we want to set the filter width to zero. And let's uh, duplicate that. We'll call this kitchen table. And we're going to load up the PTEX for that. And let's change this to about, uh, you know, let's set them both at 800 just in case. All right, great. So now that these have been loaded, um, assign the uh, shader for this. Uh, we want to create a light, a uh, V-Ray Rec light. So what I'm going to do is place these rec lights right underneath um, the light sources. And what this will do is this will give us some extra control. Um, it's going to actually be set now to Sky Portal. And when you have uh, Sky Portal selected, it's going to grab all color information and intensity from whatever's behind this light. So we're going to scale this down to fit and then we're going to basically go to our diffuse and spec contribution and set this to 20 just to, to give more of a shadow and uh, let's do the same for this light over here great and now we're going to start up our render globals so if we go into our settings here and we're going to set the render you're using V-Ray and uh, we'll go 960 by 540. Uh, convert image to sRGB for render view. We're going to turn off default lights. And then we're going to start sampler to adaptive DMC, 1 in 100. And then 0 0.030 for starters. Um, under color mapping, we're going to go and sample in, uh, using a 2.2 gamma. And we're going to leave linear workflow off, but turn everything else on. Um, uh, for our memory usage, let's set it for 8 gigs. So it'll be 8,000, and bucket size 32. Okay, great. Under RT, uh, let's just turn on everything. Doesn't hurt. 
and uh, we should be good. Oh yeah, let's turn GI on. So we'll do uh, uh, brute force primary, secondary, light cache. And so now, if we go and start uh, our IPR session for BRT, um, we should be loading right now. And there you go. So, uh, we seem to be getting a lot of light from over here. Yeah, this big white wall. Um, so we're just temporarily going to throw in some geometry to block it. There we go. Great. So now what we do is we have all this loaded up as PTEX and I can throw this uh, sphere and move it underneath in shadow um, and still get all the GI bouncing or we can throw it uh, into the light and get correct uh, shadows casting. Uh, which is actually really cool because you can't uh, you can't actually get this with a single point uh, spherical map. Um, being able to have geometry, you get distance for intensity of GI along with the uh, reflections and such. Uh, so it's actually you know really really neat to be able to do this. And if we ever wanted to adjust the um, intensity, uh, we can always go go up to the, uh, the the actual light and set this to like maybe like a ten. Or we can go lower. So right now, that's uh, that's zero. And see, we're sitting 40. And then if you want more diffuse light coming from this, then we set up to about 80. So we still have some a good amount to uh, to actually play with. And it's not too bad. So now let's load up the the whole scene. So if we stop this. Great. Okay, and we'll launch it again. <laughs> All right. Okay. So right now we're going to start up the uh, IPR session for the perspective. And it's going to start loading up all the PTEX. So uh, that actually loaded up pretty quickly. Um, and you can see now if we just move around. Now it's going to load it up. Loading up more. There we go. Slight delay. It's a lot of information to actually load up, but you can see here we're just moving around the apartment um, in RT. And so once it's uh, all loaded into RAM, it's actually pretty cool um, to interactively move around these files uh, so easily. Um, so now if we were to actually go and uh, turn physical camera on, uh, for the perspective, what we're going to do is uh, let's give it a like 80 mil. And treat as physical camera, movie camera. And uh, we're going to specify focus and turn on our focal depth of field. And if we go to the distance tool, there's a perspective uh, aim. So here's our focus right there 42, 80 centimeters. And you can see here that uh, we're getting correct depth of field that's physically correct. Um, something you couldn't actually get on just a single spherical map. Also, we can move around uh, quite easily and have correct depth of field.
And now if we grab the, the camera and uh, let's just double check our, our f-stop. So yeah, we're 2.8 if we do like a 1.4. And then adjust the camera a little bit. And uh, put our blades at 10. Get rid of the cheap lens. And then move the camera a little. There we go, now we're adjusting. And then uh, we can just grab our focus and move it to the foreground. Or if you want to focus uh, back here. And then uh, we can even focus out the window. There we go. Which is uh, pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, so now going back to this, well, let's uh, let's stop the uh, IPR a second, and I'm gonna change the camera to uh, render camera that we have set up, and uh, let's create a, s a sphere. So actually, I do have a sphere in the scene file, so I'm just gonna show this, and. Uh, I'm going to create a cube. All right. So we're going to scale this guy down. Let's get rid of that 80 mil. It's driving me crazy. Let's go back to like a 15. Let's see what I'm doing. All right. All right, so now that we have this piece right here, we'll go back to our render camera. And I'm gonna create a uh, glossy refracted shader. So let's put the diffuse off, reflection on, use Fresnel. Uh, we're going to use, uh, make sure it's not too reflective. And put the refraction on. And we'll start the uh, glossiness at 1. So it's not going to be that glossy. It's going to be pretty clear. Sign. And now if we uh, IPR render the render cam. Okay. Um, here we have the completely reflective um, sphere along with this uh, shadow piece down below and the, uh, the glass. So I'm going to grab the glass now and actually start pulling down the, uh, the glossiness of it. So what you notice is that everything that's further away um, is actually blurring more than the objects that are closer to the surface. And this is really something you can only get if you have geometry um, in the scene file. And since we have fully painted um, HDR geometry, we can actually do this quite well. And it's pretty, uh, pretty fast. Um, so now if I pull the glass away from this, it's going to start to blur a lot more. And we push it closer. And uh, I guess we can throw up a vase. And so we have uh, really glossy refraction here in the center. And then we have less uh, gloss around the uh, top and bottom. 
And if I were to uh, select this camera, let's go to physical camera. And we just want to grab this guy. Just give him a little nudge to update. There we go. Now we'll take a look at the settings. So he's at 1.4, uh, focus is set, depth of field, bokeh, everything. So, you know, this is the PTEX file that's all uh, rendering in V-Ray at the physical camera. Um, if I were to actually open up the reference frame of this, it's pretty, uh, pretty damn close. So let's open up Nuke. And if we look at this frame, uh, this was taken with a 1.4, and the uh, the depth of field is is pretty pretty close. I mean, we don't have the uh, glass on the windows giving it that milky uh, milky look, but um, accuracy wise, it's not too bad, um, especially for this being completely 3D, and the fact that uh, you know we can just move this camera camera all around. Um, you know, which is pretty, uh, which is pretty exciting. And the fact that it's PTEX, you have all that resolution to, uh, to play with. Um, and also the, let me show, uh, show the truck. grab our, our render aim. We'll focus right here. And if we go ahead and just show the, uh, the mirror. So what you're going to see with this is, since we have physical camera turned on, our reflections are going to, are going to correct, um, have like a correct depth of field. So it's going to actually uh, blur everything else in the distance. And uh, you can see here we're focused on this edge of the car, and uh, it's correctly blurring in the reflection along with uh, everything in the mirror that's being out of focus, uh, which is really, uh, really neat. And I also have a pre-rendered piece, which is uh, a model that Masa, I read it, modeled in ZBrush, and this was uh, rendered uh, with the PTEX setup, so this is a PTEX uh, V-Ray physical camera uh, rendered through V-Ray. And that, uh, that about wraps it up uh, with the PTEX HDR workflow. So I hope you enjoyed everything and hope you've learned a, a few things or been inspired. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.